The electric vehicle market is evolving and we here at Autofuel are right here for you to cover it with the all-new Polestar 2. Finally, a serious competitor to the Tesla Model 3 or also to BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, Mercedes C-Class. We'll find out more here on exterior, interior and the driving experience with this Polestar 2. Tune in here in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In front here you can see a sporty stance on the road by the Polestar 2, the Thor's Hammer LED lamps here with a daytime running light, this is then Volvo Heritage inspired and it starts with LED headlamps and if you get the so-called plus package in certain markets already included now then you also get the pixel LED so for a more extensive elaborated LED function. Then you can see it does have somewhat of a crossover look here in the front and it will also continue over onto the side profile. we see more about that soon. Then it has, so to say, a typical sedan look also in the front, but of course here a little bit more closed because oh, the electric vehicle does need, doesn't need so much cooling. But they don't follow a concept saying like screaming out, hey, I'm an electric vehicle. It's more an ordinary look than again with some accent. What do you think about the first impression? 4 meters 60, 15 foot 1 or 181 inches is the length of the Polestar 2. And taking the Tesla Model 3 but also the internal combustion competitors here in this mid-size sedan segment. You can see the shape is indeed typical mid-size sedan with a beautiful roofline right there. Strong shoulders actually, a little bit sports car like. Then you have the contrasting bumpers. So more, yeah, you know, somewhat of a crossover style as well. Then we can see, it was also interesting, the side mirrors here. They are frameless, or almost frameless. One of the first times we see that. I think it's a very beautiful integration. And you can see here, very flat roof line. Also not so high with the windows right there. As for technologies, you start standard with the adaptive suspension and 19-inch wheels. And then there are also 20-inch wheels optionally available. This here is a car with a performance pack. The performance pack includes 20-inch wheels. They are also the forged 20-inch wheels. Then bigger Brembo brake discs, also with golden brake calipers. You'll also have golden seat belts on the inside. Soon more about that. You have a black panoramic roof in this performance pack. And then also the dampers change. Performance pack comes with Erlins dampers. They are fixed. You can adjust them hardware-wise from the outside, but then that's basically it. Now you have to go to the to the workshop again. So adaptive suspension, if you want more comfort and 19-inch wheels, that would be the most comfortable setup. Performance pack, 20-inch wheels with the fixed Erlins dampers will give you more stiffness if you want a sportier ride. Of course, soon more to that when driving. In the rear, you can also see a very sleek design. You realize that the Polestar CEO, Thomas Ingenlad, is a designer at heart. <laughs> then you can see here, the light strip goes all over the vehicle right there and then forming this C on both sides, Polestar logo. And then this contrast between the vehicle color and the black lower part, of course, here even more contrastish because it's a wide vehicle. And let me already give you the performance figures. It's 408 horsepower, 660 newton meters of torque, overdrive because there are two electric motors, one in the front, one in the rear here. They're both actually the same and the overdrive distribution is always about 50-50, so it doesn't really change. And 4.7 seconds is the acceleration figure, 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles an hour. About charging and battery so this is on the driver's side 11 kilowatt ac charging up to 150 kilowatt dc charging of that 78 kilowatt hour battery gross or 72.5 kilowatt net and that will give us a range 
officially 470 kilometers and 290 miles but if we're a little bit more realistic and depending on situation 440 kilometers or 270 miles that's you know what you can always count with This is the car key. This is a small downside. This is, you know, really cheap and plasticish. Um, the only good thing is that they don't use a leather wrap, but I think a leather wrap, for example, would be a suitable solution for that. Opening and closing. Other than that, you rather use the keyless entry, put your hand on the outside to close it, and on the. Oh, there. Look at that. How. How this. The side mirror here. I'm going to open it again. It's just slightly, obviously it doesn't go all the way in. Hmm, interesting. But then again, here with the f almost frameless, what a beautiful design of this side mirror. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, just again, you know, when I, when I close it, I would expect it to fold in a little bit closer to the vehicle. Hmm, interesting. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we like to take a look at details. So then, inside of the vehicle, here, there's a soft touch material on the top part, and it's some kind of fabric. It's, um, you know, it's looking slick, but it's rather rough surface from what you feel, but overall, I think a good choice. Then soft material here and here as well. Then this Scandinavian bright fabric design, really cool, memory seating. The door pockets are rather slim. Then first look at the interior, the steering wheel is similar to the one we see in the recent Volvos, for example. Then dashboard material is um, not exactly hard packs, a little bit soft. And again, this fabric surface, everything looks and feels really good. The floor mats, by the way, I like them because they are so easy to pop in and out here. So they're really secure and safe, but then it's so easy to pop in and out that you can actually clean them or just, you know, you know shake them a little bit around on the outside so to me those details you know are really interesting then the seats one of the key features here this car is really vegan from the interior so animal free materials both on the steering wheel and on the seats here either with this black design or you can also get a bluish design actually they still unlike tesla offer animal skin option but that's of course not really necessary and also doesn't make sense because these seats here interesting the outside fabric is a little bit, you know, rougher and more open cell, I would say, from the material. The inside looks slick. It looks like a leatherette, but it also has some kind of a structure to be more breathable, actually. And so the big advantage then also just practical-wise is these seats will stay cooler in summer and warm in winter, unlike the animal skin option, which you should not go for for ethical reasons, environmental reasons, and of course also just for practical reasons. So very good job by Polestar to introduce that. The performance pack here introduces also these golden seat belts. I like that, so it's a nice contrast to that. Getting inside is like typically with the mid-size sedan, and you find a good seating position. The seats are also quite comfortable from the first impression. Zoom motor driving. The lower part you can put out. And this fabric material is really something very new. It's very interesting. It doesn't feel... I mean, this is like a typical fabric material you find in cars, which is totally good. But this one here, indeed new. And I think they really wanted to do that to combine somehow, you know, functionality and the design looks. So a very interesting approach. And we would really like to see more of that. That shows that it's really possible to combine sustainability and premium. This is what it, this car is actually all about. Then putting the steering wheel in and out and up and down to find your position. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. <laughs> you know that was from my Insta channel at thomas.letsgo. And here headroom is pretty close to the outside, a little bit further than to the inside. This one here equipped with the panoramic roof, which is fixed. It cannot be opened. 
The only thing is, you know, you have this UV layering that is also reducing the heating up of the cabin. We have to see how it is when you really like, you know, have 40 degrees <laughs> Celsius on the outside or you are in, in the 90s in Fahrenheit. We have to see about that. But for normal climate, you know, it, it will actually be quite okay. So, and soon more details to all of these screens. First of all, a clean interior experience and what you notice in comparison to the Tesla Model 3, you know, I really like the Tesla technology approach and also their sustainability and, you know, change of mobility approach. One thing you feel here, they have the Volvo experience, so to say. So the finishing of the materials for the, you know, first glance, this is where this one would be better than the Model 3. Interior overview, first is general overview for you, general overview, <laughs> then here the steering wheel, again Volvo inspired. I think they could do something more in the future there to differentiate it from the Volvo models. Right side here to control something of the instruments on the left or here the volume up and down. Voice input you can also activate here or then just with the speech input, soon more to that. Left side then for the cruise control functions on the middle part here you have the vertical screen so it's about 11 inches and the left digital instrument is 12.3 inches and the overall design is very clean optional harm and color sound system or included in the plus package which is in some markets now also included really depends on market specifications then here again softer dashboard and the nice fabric here with a rather rough surface with a very interesting one then the matte wood experience here and also at the inside there so a beautiful interior design this inductive charging pad for your smartphone but you also have two USB-C chargers right there in the front then we have this crystal look volume knob thank you so much that we still have a manual volume knob that's really cool in the play on stop button and we can also test you know the Harman Kardon sound system here with the song by Above and Beyond. Wow, that's a very cool surround sound. I like that. Beautiful. So, yeah, good when the plus package is already included then when you buy the car. You should really go for this, this sound system. Really nice. Then this shifting lever here is a beautiful job, also with the illuminated Polestar logo in the center part. Put it in the front for reverse gear and back then for the D mode and when you're in the reverse gear you can also see the camera system is being activated that gives you this 360 degree view but you can also just activate for example just the rear camera it's also a decent solution so again soon more deals to the screens then we have cup holes here they're adaptive one center one here and there's this armrest you can put up and then there's another cup holder below that and it's also adaptive i think a good solution well, guys, brace yourself, because so far, these infotainment screens by the, or infotainment software by the manufacturers, they were evolving, evolving, but they were always not keeping up to our smartphones. Oh, they're schmoozy, my little sweetie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, how about that? And now it has changed. This system here is Android-based, and so it's super fast. It's just what we need, and I'll explain you all why. First of all, this is the car menu here right there in the top part so car menu there you can change the creeping mode so when you lift the brake that the car either just stands still or creeps a little bit forward depending on how you like it better sport mode for the ec to reduce stability control the steering feel lights and firm we will test it while driving and the one pedal drive how harsh you want to have the acceleration usually i would leave it in standard mode for safety reasons also i will explain that why in the driving assistance systems you can also activate or deactivate and everything has a clear overview actually you see the battery is not quite full yet but definitely enough and here look at that how easy everything is i mean it is so intuitive even if you have never seen the system yet then the camera system here again you can reach it right there and this then is this app view for the um, you know for the android system you can use the play store and install new apps this is something that we will be now build uh, more and more that you can install more and more apps well here the temperature is in the screen and to reach that while driving this is maybe the only flaw i like to have separate climate knobs but the design of the car hardly makes it possible seat heating here and also heated steering wheel but the 
voice assistant is so sophisticated that in this case it's easy actually there will be apple carplay available by the way later on uh, in 2021 and when auto actually not the reason is you don't need it because this is an android system already and you can do everything with it you would connect your phone via bluetooth for the contacts and so on and here you just then say yeah or use the google assistant um google maps of course look at how responsive that is and we all know google maps is the best set nav and it really you know includes all the live data and you can just you know get to the destination very quickly hey google drive me to berlin Berlin is five Perfect. hours and 49 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. So, I mean, that's totally flawless and also, you know, how quickly everything was realized from the voice input. And, I mean, it goes even further. Hey, Google, change temperature to 20 degrees. Sure, changing the temperature to 20 degrees. And I did it now while I was calculating also here this map. You see there was a little bit, little bit delay, but just a little bit. Otherwise it would have, you know, would have been even faster. Hey Google, play something from Armin van Buren. I mean. All right, asking Spotify to play Armin van Buren. I mean, guys. This is so awesome. I mean, I've never seen a system that is working better. I mean, the voice input um, by Tesla is, of course, really cool. That's that's true, yes. But this one is my... I mean, it's it's beyond anything else, you know. You see, I'm a baby This is really like... This is finally how everything should be. So, I can just say double thumbs up. 12.3 digital instruments 12.3 inch you can see here is like a start up view and then when you hit the brakes and put in the d mode the drive mode it switches to this you know active display there we go and for example you can also have the gps map then all the way all over the screen it's clear it's simple it's just how it should be rear here inside of the doors also with the soft touch fabric then again the bright scandinavian furniture design right there and also the same seat design in the rear with the nice contrasting seat belts as well hey we had three contrasting seat belts here in the rear way to go <laughs> and in the middle climate unit you also have seat heating for the rear outside seats and also behind this cover there are two more usb c chargers so you know it's not like a typical EV only platform. So let's see about the result there. And black like mobiles, it's actually no problem. So again, with one is a six or six with one, enough black room left. Uh, when the seat is in the lowest position, I can hardly put my feet under it. So um, when you have, you know, big feet like I do, <laughs> then you should raise the driver seat a little bit. Say, Hello driver, could you put the seat a little bit higher? Thank you. And then you can even, you know, better fit with your with your feet here. Maybe that's one design flaw. The seat should have been flatter from the lower part. Um, headroom wise, exactly fits for me. So my hairs do touch the steering when I put up my spine. Uh, so I think it's you know it's still okay. So with four tall adults, it's actually no problem. Interesting that with this, you know, fixed um, panoramic roof here. I do already feel this UV protection because sometimes when you are, in, you know, sitting in cars and have a panoramic roof and the sun is really shining and it's like, whoa, you immediately feel how hot it is. But here, you know, the sun is, you know, just like half behind that tree now. Um, but even if I, you know, tend to look towards the sun, which of course you should never do, <laughs> then you don't feel that it, it would be so hot. So very interesting first impression as for that. And from here, I can also see this projected Polestar logo there in the panoramic roof is also very interesting detail. Yeah, I think it's really comfortable here in the rear. Isofix at the outside parts. You do, there it is, you know, for the child seats. Then you do flip the seats from here because you cannot do it from the trunk. Soon showing you the trunk, of course. In the middle part, you can also put this middle head restraint up. It's good for safety. Then here, adaptive cup holders. This will also feature a ski hatch, by the way. In the middle seat, 
well, there's this tunnel for the torsional rigidity. You do not need it because there's no mechanical link. Actually, this then just for the, you know the stability reasons, and of course they need to put batteries somewhere. They're placed way low in the vehicle to keep the center of gravity low. You can also sit here in the middle seats, not the most comfortable position, but also with five tall adults, this car is very well usable. Well, in past days, it was only the Porsche 911, always with the VW Beetle. Yeah, but electric vehicles really revived the name front trunk, frunk. And let's take a look at the frunk right here. And here it is. And there you can store your charging cables, different charging cables for like, you know, charging station and at home and so on. And then all the rear stays clean. So I think, yeah, good solution. Also, you know, this soft cover here in the front. And the only other thing here for the wiper fluid, you can refill it right here. 405 to 1095 liters is the boot capacity with folded seats. Here, the button below, clean design integration, but that might catch a lot of dirt then while driving. That's the downside of it. But you can also open it with the key fob, for example. This is really cool. A fast back opening, big difference to the Tesla Model 3, which has this typical sedan opening. This is way easy to load things in and out. If you don't want to open that wide, you can also, for example, stop it in this position and hold in this position then the opening button after you know beeping sound occurs next time it will also stop in this position this top cover here you can remove if you like we cannot flip the seats or fold the seats from here you could reach over i'll soon do that what is interesting that we have a trunk split right here this is really cool we know that from volvo models as well to secure for example when you just want to put a backpack in here and you don't want it to fly all over the place or just to split it here for a cabin trolley this i think is a great easy solution like this you know and then it can't you know slide all over the trunk you can see it also fits in here in the vertical way no problem actually and then below that you could then again also store your charging cables this is a body cover here for shows, for example, but, um, you know, this doesn't belong to the car at all as a customer then. This is actually good space also for the charging cables because the rear trunk is always better to open. So you can, you know, vary that. On the left side, you have a 12 volt power supply and also a retractable towing hook. So if I press this button here at the lower side of the vehicle, there will be the towing hook coming up. There we go. Ta-da! There we have it. So electric vehicle also with towing capacity. And you can also pull it back in here again. Then what about some measurements? The length here, normal length is about a meter. The width is also about a meter. And the height here to the top cover is about 40 centimeters. Pretty much standard size. As you can see, you can use a ski hatch to load things through in the middle part and you can also then fold the seats right here like this two-third one-third split and the maximum length then to the front seats as we would be driving so that's about one meters and 80. last but not least what about the child safety test of this hatch let's check it out That's okay. Welcome to Thomas' Driving Lounge with the Polestar 2. We go through different driving situations, city, motorway, suspension, overview and so on. One pedal driving, so everything you need to know. So at the moment, I got everything in the standard mode so this is then a harsh recuperation strong recuperation so when i lift the throttle really you know recuperates very well so you actually don't need the brake pedal in most situations you just have this one pedal driving feeling and that's actually cool and i think it's also a safety thing um, because when you just use one pedal um, and you lift the, your foot off the throttle, then you immediately brake. And in the time you would need to switch from the acceleration pedal to the brake pedal, 
There is, you know, a second that calls to time in deceleration. So I think that's definitely a safety thing to leave it like this. You can also put it to low, for example. So, you know, let's say you, um, you don't want to use this in, in that way. Then the recuperation is a little bit less, actually. And you could also put it to absolutely off. So here now, low, you see the car rolls a little bit further, actually. And then that's it, or off then if you just want the roll. And of course, when you use the brakes, you still do regenerate um, energy. It's just that, you know, it's a different setting. Here, creep mode, by the way, when I set the creep mode to on, then, I mean, now it's like uphill, but then uh, the car creeps a little bit forward when you stand still, like this. Now, now it works. Here, yeah, creeping a little bit forward. That's more like a normal automatic gearbox, for example. I like this feature actually also for traffic, for example. Then you roll a little bit forward just by releasing the brakes. I would leave it like this. Steering feeling here, this is standard. You can also put it to light and it's like hardly any resistance, but you also don't have to feel it. And then when you put it to firm, then you have a little bit more feedback. So also according to your liking. If you're driving with the passenger, or passengers, especially in the rear, by the way, and you have the one pedal drive feeling into standard, um, be aware that when you suddenly lift the throttle totally, there's really a lot of G-force applied. So you would need to learn the EV driving mode with one pedal driving to be smooth all through the throttle. So if you want to, for example, there's a next traffic light, and then you slightly go off the throttle and really finely tune it, that's also a good experience for your passengers. That's something, you know, you just get used to it and it happens quite quickly and also, you know, in a very intuitive way, of course. The torque of this engine, 6 or 60 Newton meters of torque, I mean, it's already there, always when you need it. Um, there's no classic power curve of an internal combustion engine. And, you know, when we get onto a little bit more speed soon, by the way here, turning indicator sound is really unique. It's like a very special sound. So have never heard such a turning indicator sound. You have to get used to it. I think it, it sounds kind of premium and different. I mean, so yeah, why not? So I think um, before we do a first acceleration, I think Jonas, you have something on the dashboard there. Maybe that will fly all over the place when I do acceleration. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so because you always have to bear in mind here, just 40 to 60, you ready? <laughs> That's it. It's like, plop, and we're there. And yeah, we know, you know, Tesla Model 3, for example, in the performance version has even more punch. But this year now, acceleration-wise, definitely in regions of like an um, BMW 3 Series M performance model, Audi S4, Mercedes C43 and so on. So you have more than enough power and most of the time you have to think like, wow, you know, let's, let's really finely tune it, not to exaggerate it. And this is really cool, you know, you have a very sustainable vehicle. Of course, it will always be more sustainable to buy a used car, whatever, because it's already built. But if you buy a new vehicle, this one will already be a very sustainable one from the interior materials and so on. And we know that electric vehicles do have a better overall CO2 output as well, although some bias studies claim otherwise. Um, but at the end of the day, they are actually better, especially when you use a regenerative energy mix. And you know, all the, you know, you can gain back the energy you know, when you lift the throttle and also, you know, short term is no problem you can start at any temperature then it you know may go a little bit to the you know the, the battery maybe you know changes the, the, the consumption then but um there's no problem for an electric motor just to do a startup and directly hit the throttle that would be bad for an internal combustion engine then we have the oil and stampers here the optional ones and 20 inch wheels so the most uncomfortable setup here you can get for this vehicle. Again, the most comfortable would be standard adaptive dampers together with the 19 inch wheels. And I would also advise you to go for that. It will be sporty enough. This is still, you know, laid out in a sportier way than for example, a Volvo S60 would be. This one here, this setup here, if you really want a sports car feeling and indeed these early Erlins dampers together with the 20 inch wheels, they do deliver a sports car feeling. More again like a C43, um, 
like a M340i and so on. And it actually gives me a very good feedback from the road. The steering feeling is, I would rather probably set it to firm to have some more feedback because um, that's maybe the only thing that the German premium manufacturers can still do better to give you like a steering feeling that gives you a better connection between road, car and the driver. It's not bad at all here and it's also, you know, precise and direct enough. Just like from the natural connection experience, it could use um, it could use uh, some some fine tune, for example. Um, yeah, you can adjust the mirrors here, and uh, it goes quite quickly. So let's get on the motorway right here. Blind spot monitor. There's this red stripe in the mirror, and here we can accelerate from 80 to 120. Blop, that's it. Wow, that's that's so amazing, really. Wow, and after Google um, Maps view here also in the, in the center part, and it's so flawless to to read and and see that that I, I actually don't even need the center GPS there. Usually with the digital cockpit, sometimes I also put it here, like to just to compare. But here, that's that's all flawless, all good. Now driving at the 100 kilometers an hour, and it's also still perfectly silent here in this interior. Here again, gaining back some energy. Now setting here the cruise control to 80 kilometers an hour and just relax. So noise insulation wise, so far also a very good experience. Again to these dampers, can you use them in your everyday driving life? I mean, you do feel the stiffness, but it's not that you would feel like, um, it's like, oh, if I bought this or like, let's say at some point you'd buy a used car with 20 inch wheels and the early in dampers, I think like, do I lose all comfort? I think it's still okay. So it's not the harshest setup, but definitely you have to be aware of that you will have a more comfortable everyday driving life if you just stick with the normal adaptive suspension. So I think it doesn't really make so much sense to get these optional dampers unless you really appreciate that very, very sporty setup. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> with that setup, this car would actually even be race track suitable. And you know, we talked about the Tesla Model 3 when we launched it on the track. Then I said, it just needs some optional Erlins or Bielstein uh, dampers, and then it's a perfect track vehicle. Here you can already get it from works, you know? So uh, that's definitely a very interesting experience. So let's line up in the traffic right here. Again, setting the cruise control. You can also set distance to the car in front of us. Here again, left on the steering wheel and you know, and the distance also is being kept depending on how you set it. By the way, the size of the vehicle here, you feel good. Also here in construction, side lanes. Overview is excellent here to the sides because there's hardly any frame, so you have a very clear view of what's here and I don't need virtual mirrors for that. To the rear, it's a little bit limited because the rear window has some kind of a notch, so to say, and it's no very tiny to look through. The A pillar here is okay, standard. The B pillar is quite thick, so again, the blind spot monitor is something you can definitely use. So um, you should, you know, but it's already included with, with the car, so that's again something good. Autonomous emergency brake also included with the vehicle. So I think configurating this car is also very easy because most of the things are already inside. Now, accelerating once again to one kilometers, everything feels so flawless with, the, with this vehicle. That's again something pretty, pretty cool. Now, changing the lanes, and here now in the next. Here, I don't need, even need to hit the brakes. You know, there's like some police who was not using the brakes at all. So, there will be just very rare situations when you leave in the standard air recuperation modes where you really need the brakes. Oh, there's like a truck needs to change the tire. Yeah, happens from time to time. So again, once, you know, such a flawless driving experience with this vehicle. Let's now get to a little bit more speed. Wow. It's so, so cool to accelerate this car out and everything's silent. I don't miss any engine sound at all. It's absolutely not needed. I mean, maybe a little bit higher speed. Is it 
better or worse as for the noise insulation than the competitors. I think approximately at the same level. The overall driving feeling then, if you would forget, you know, for, for a thing that you have, you know, this electric drive, it could at some point also be a Volvo X60 or something. Then again, we have the stiffer right here. Um, so this is the thing about this car. It's not, you know, it's not not normal. So you feel like driving a normal mid-size sedan. It's not that spaceship and unique like with the te like like the Tesla Model 3. When you drive the Tesla Model 3, it's really like unlike anything else. So this is more normal car like, so to say. But then it adds this, you know, this special characteristics, its unique features, and I can just say that everything that that set this part here apart, for example, from the Volvo A60 combustion engine, is indeed better. There's better acceleration. Um, the car has a lower center of gravity that makes it feel very sporty when I'm doing, you know, lane changes here. It really feels like a, you know, like a serious sports car. So everything they made EV here really improved it. Then you have the good software. What's also interesting, by the way, is that you can change the temperature, let's say in a little bit better way. So when you click in the lower part and center part, then here. This is easier to change temperature while driving, for example, when you have this bigger display. So um, um, yeah, that's somewhat okay. Click here in the lower part, you know, here on the temperature so it's yeah I mean it's a little bit distressing yes you can also have a two-zone AC by the way right and left so this is a quite big display for that now more acceleration 102 let's see Whoa. and 180 kilometers an hour you see here already when we're at speed still a good acceleration but that BMW was also quite fast. And now to 160 kilometers an hour and still good as well. Noise insulation is really silent here. You know, remember when we're in electric vehicles, there's no engine sound that would cover wind noise and so on. And therefore, this insulation is even more important here. And that was also perfectly fine. Here now at about 130, 125 miles, uh, 125 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that will be a little bit fast. So 130 would be some, you know, 80 miles, typical motorway speed, also with a higher motorway speed. And that's once again, totally fine. Great noise insulation, also higher speeds. Lucky that we are on German motorway today and we can test an even higher speed. And wow, such a fun to accelerate out even at higher speeds. So amazing. Look at that, 180 kilometers an hour. And again, it's not exceedingly noisy here or so really cool and when I lift the throttle again good recuperation getting inside here wow what a cool experience and yeah it was time to take it out to the German motorway that's what we did here today um, the only thing that is missing is a proper consumption test um, so when you accelerate it out in that way of course yeah I mean it's it's not that realistic, you don't do that all the time. So let me reset the consumption meter. Click again to confirm. And let's put it to a cruise control speed, to 100 kilometers an hour. Here we go. And let's see what the consumption then says. Bring me to the right lane, that everyone can drive faster now. So, because then, when we have the new calculated energy consumption then we can then calculate once again with the battery with the net size of the battery which would be a more realistic range as for our test wait just a little bit drive a little bit further and then present you the result in the final conclusion but once again driving dynamics is awesome maybe a little bit more feel in the steering wheel, but then when you set a little bit stiffer here in the mode, it's actually quite cool. It's a lot of fun to drive, low center of gravity, so agile feeling of this vehicle, more agile than any other mid-size sedan. It feels sportier also than the Tesla Model 3, even though it doesn't have like the hyper performance acceleration, but it's more than enough. It has some serious power, really good. Recuperation is good, one pedal driving feeling is good. The noise insulation is well done. 
So there's hardly anything to complain about. The seats here also give you a good long-term support and so on. So this is again, just like we've seen exterior design styling wise, interior and so on. Such an awesome vehicle, can't say otherwise. One more addition here for our longer auto gefühl version. The pilot assist, as we know from the Volvo models, is also in here. So you activate it by one right click here at the steering wheel. Then you have this yellow steering wheel symbol and then actually recognizes what's going on and keeps you in the lane. So I'm not steering here at the moment. Of course, not meant to be an autopilot. So you should not take your hands off the steering wheel. But it works quite well. Here now we will see that the, the lane changes a little bit. There you can see it automatically corrects just a little bit to the right and now once again a little bit to the left. So never trust in it 100%, but you see it works actually quite well and it's also right quite smooth process. Here it also needs some you know, apply steering. Oh, you see that? Obviously it also has a um, capacitive function then here. So it didn't need me as a steering intervention, but just to put it once again on the steering wheel. So you see it does just, you know, demonstration purpose now. Please don't do it at home. And here then, let's see. Oh, yeah. So you see uh, when, when you have standing objects, you should be a little bit careful. These adaptive cruise controls are rather set on moving objects. So, um, yeah, at some point, of course, the autonomous emergency brake would have been activated. But of course, you can make a more, you know, a more smooth braking experience than when you see stuff like this in advance. Again, the assistance systems are good and helpful, but never trust 100% in them. However, here, you know, how the lanes being kept, also on the motorway we tested earlier, is actually quite good. Not the most natural, not the smoothest um, with steering <laughs> program. Um, but definitely not a bad one at all. So it's also nice to have it to be able to relax then a little bit more, maybe on longer motorway hauls. And now we're back here with our conclusion for today with the Polestar 2. The white color here, by the way, is called Snow, so Snow White. Exterior, a strong stance here, typical mid-sized sedan shape, but with a lot of sporty elements, so I think really likable. Interior, a clean design, clean layout, high build quality, and actually in this case, totally animal-free materials. Yes, they still offer the option, but most people probably won't go for it, and there's also a reason behind it. So, a very good interior, you also have enough space. The only two minor things is, when you sit in the rear, you should put the seats in the front a little bit higher for a better you know, foot position in the rear. And also the co-driver seat, the passenger seat, we always use ready terms here. Um, there are also, when you put your feet in the very, very front, you have long legs, then there should also be a little bit more space for your feet. These are two minor flaws. Other than that, yeah, there could be still climate knobs. We know a lot of us guys really appreciate that. But the voice input is just superb. The whole infotainment system is the best you can get, actually. The Google integration, there's nothing better here at the moment. Also the GPS and so on. The voice input is just so fast and so flawless. So the thoughts behind this vehicle are really, really good. That we have the fastback opening in the rear, for example, as well. So this is the vehicle Audi, BMW and Mercedes should, brought, should have brought out five years ago. This is it. This is a very contemporary vehicle now. It serves almost all needs and it's just an awesome ride. It's very quick, very performant, yet at the same time it's comfortable in the riding experience. The um, energy consumption here in our test is about 17 kilowatt hours on, in 100 kilometers. That's about 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And how did I do this calculation? I just asked the infotainment system. Hey Google, 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And then it said 27. So, and that also confirms our approximate range figure of about 440 kilometers or 270 miles. And I think that's also absolutely sufficient. So, 
You need a charging infrastructure at home or at work. That's of course with every electric vehicle that you know shouldn't rely all on the you know on the remote charging stations and the public charging stations and so on. But other than that, I think this is actually the mid-size car to go for. The Tesla Model 3, of course, two strong competitors now. The Tesla has some tweaks here and there, some very good things. Um, maybe it's a little bit more efficient here and there, for example. And um, it's a different infotainment system, for example. However, the poles are better in the interior build quality, for example. The driving dynamics is also superb, actually. So they're really, really very close. At the moment, probably I would rather tend a little bit towards this one here. And it's rather clear that when you have your charging infrastructure cleared, this car here really exceeds the performance of the internal combustion engine, uh, internal combustion engine competitors. And that's something really astonishing. So, what a surprising experience here with the Polestar 2. Really impressed here today. What's your opinion? Please discuss it in the comments and also what you think about the comparison then to the competitors. We'll also link some interesting videos for you in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.